Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile back with our video today and today it is a new month so you guys know what time it is. It's time for a reptile room tour. In this reptile room tour I'm definitely going to get to show you pretty much everybody. I know Bane's out right now. Uh, there's an empty tank back here. I would love for you guys to leave your suggestions as to what you think is going in there in the comment section down below. Just a, a little hint for you guys. They like it hot. I'm going to also show you a little bit of my aquarium and just kind of talk to you about each of the animals. So why don't we get this show on the road and start. Actually, why don't we start with the aquarium? All right, and here we are at the nine gallon Fluval Flex. This is my pride and joy of the aquascaping world. <laughs> this is the second tank I ever aquascaped and I think it turned out pretty nicely to be totally honest. Um, I had some really large, um, I guess Ludwigia, I can't remember the exact name of it, in the back corner there, but I ended up trimming it all out just because I didn't really like the way it looked. Um, it also was blocking a lot of light from the rest of the plants, so the tank right now is doing pretty well. Um, as you can see, I actually did change out the hood for my Fluval Flex. Uh, this is the Fluval Nano 3.0 LED, and it is incredible for this tank. The only thing that I don't like about the Fluval Flex is that I had to change out the LEDs. If I didn't have that on hand, I, I don't know what would have happened, but it would have just gone without light because my LED light just randomly stopped working on the tank. So I don't know if that's a condensation issue or if that's just a, a light issue, I'm not really sure. But why don't we go into a little bit more detail in the tank here. This is Micranthema Monte Carlo, that really nice carpeting plant. Next to that is Pogostamon helferi. We got some Anubius Petite. Uh, that's also in the back there is Anubius Petite. And up here we have some wavy green and red species Bucephalandra or Bucephalandra, I don't know. And then the rocks that I'm using in this is the Dragonstone. You can see it back there. Stocking on this tank is actually pretty full. Uh, we have a, a Pistogramma right here. I can't pronounce the species name of it, so I'll throw it on screen right now for you guys to check it out. Uh, the rest of the fish in here, there is a rainbow fish. I can't remember the name of the rainbow. And then we just have some purple het rasboras or a purple harlequin rasboras is their other name. But yeah, I know you guys wanted a little bit of an update for the tank, so that's your update. Next off, we're actually gonna go over here to the stack of wooden cages that I have. Now we're back up to three. Um, I don't know if you guys can see very well in there. I posted this on Instagram, so if you aren't following me there, uh, I, I guess go follow me, links in the description. But um, I posted it on Instagram and everybody thought I emptied my room. No, it was just a perspective shot of the tank up there. So, like I said, leave your guesses in the comment section as to what you think might be going in here. Below here is Sky, the Maruki Blue Tongue Skink. Um, he's doing very, very well. It's getting late here. The lights are about to shut off in about an hour, so everybody's kind of winding down. But uh, his tank's doing fine. He's doing fine. Um, for heating and lighting, I do have UVB on these guys. I need to replace these pretty soon here. Uh, maybe about another month, I think I have. And for heating, I have a heat panel up top there with its uh, thermostat controlled. And that back there is the probe, so. Everything is good in the hood with Sky. And coming all the way down here, we have Bowser. Bowser's still doing really well. Um, uh, I say this every time. I mean, honestly, I didn't really take very good care of him when I first got him. I didn't do enough research. My hotspot wasn't hot enough. Many different problems. Um, I, I mean, honestly, guys, we all make mistakes, and that is one of my mistakes that I've made for sure, but I've ensured that he is doing better now. Um, he does have a little bit of gout, unfortunately, but he's still moving, he's still eating, he's still a happy monitor boy. Uh, he's just poking his head out down there, but if I stick him much further in, I won't be able to talk. So, um, he's doing great overall, and his tank is doing fine. <laughs> uh, here we have Striker who's actually 
lounging in his homemade hide down there. But uh, that's definitely one of the reasons why I love naturalistic vivariums for leopard geckos. I'll leave a link, I think it's up here, for you guys to go check it out. But I basically did an update on his tank and kind of told you why I think that everybody should do naturalistic for their leopard geckos. Some people might not agree with me, but uh, I really do. I mean, like, how, how can you say that, oh, no, I wouldn't want that in my house. Oh, what are you talking about? Ugh. I don't like that. That looks terrible. He thinks it's food. Brother, get me some food, man. Get you some food. Overall, the tank is doing great. Striker's doing fantastic. Um, he's eating really well. He's very active. He's super, super vibrant. The tank's growing in. Nothing to complain about here. Um, Striker, if you guys don't know, is the OG. He's the original gangster of the reptile hobby for me. He was what started the hobby back for me when I was eight years old, and he is now 15, and uh, he's never looked better. Love this little guy. Love him to pieces. Something that not very many people watched, but is probably the coolest reptiles in my room. I'm just gonna get them down. So these are the coolest animals and my favorite. I do have to say they are my favorite um, of my entire room. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the video, I'll leave a link up top for you guys to go check out. But honestly, these guys are called Vietnamese black-breasted leaf turtles or Geomita spangleri. They are extremely rare and they are absolutely gorgeous, hilarious little dudes. Um, I'll throw in a couple clips of them eating right now for you guys to check out. Right now, they're just living in some bins that I customized for them. Nothing special. They are little babies. Well, they're still babies right now. They were born in September here in Canada. Captive bred. Don't worry, you guys. Um, they are just outstanding little creatures. They have so much personality. They're so rambunctious. They're just hilarious. Um, I do want to move them into, uh, I think I'm going to move them into Stryker's old setup, like the glass tank, and I'm basically just going to divide it in two and then dangle a UVB bulb inside the tank and throw a glass top on top. Um, because these guys like it really humid and having an open air tank with these would just not work um, <laughs> with my ambient humidity here. I did mirror the cages. They are very similar. There is basically the only way I could tell them apart at the beginning and still kind of now is A, their shell, their shell color is a little bit different and B, I set up their tanks with slightly different plants. I basically have the silver philodendron in this one and the Swiss cheese philodendron in that one. I'm going to give you guys the opportunity as I still haven't named these guys yet. I don't really know that they're a male and a female. I'm just really, really hoping because their tails are slightly different. So I'm just hoping that I get a breeding pair out of these because they're from unrelated parents and that would be one of the coolest things ever is to breed these guys. So uh, I, I don't know yet. They're certainly far from full grown. I've been tracking their growth. I weigh them uh, weekly. It's been a little <laughs> irregular in the last couple of weeks because of Christmas and whatnot. But they are just incredible little creatures. As you guys saw, their hunting is so funny. I can't deny their cuteness and just overall audacity of these guys. So if you guys just had, or if you guys wanted a little idea of how big my room actually is, my bed it looks like a bomb went off because I'm making that new cage, but it's actually really tiny. I mean, you just saw those, me close up with those, and it's small. Like most of my friends walk in here and they're like, oh, I expect it to be so much bigger. No. No, it's, it's pretty small in here. <laughs> so these right here are Ebenavia inguis. 
the Madagascar Clawless Gecko. Um, everybody freaks out when I say this, but they are wild caught. Um, for those of you that are wholly against wild caught, um, don't worry. I will be making a thoroughly educated and researched video for you guys. Sorry guys. Back to my point. I will be making a very well educated and researched video for you. Um, just to kind of educate people on the, the research and facts, I suppose, on wild caught species. Uh, I know it's going to be an extremely, extremely controversial video. Probably the most controversial I've ever been. But, uh, yeah. I'm not going to go into it now. I just hope you guys can appreciate them for their beauty. And uh, just the super beautiful creatures that they are. That's enough about the Abinavia Ninguis. If you guys are looking for a dwarf gecko... One of the coolest ones out there. I don't think they're actually being bred in the States just yet. Um, I know there's imports and stuff if you guys are interested in keeping them. But uh, that is up to you to research and to know how to take care of them. Now, these are not wild caught. These are captive bred. Um, these are the Neon Day Geckos. You can see them back there. Not much is going on with them, although I will update you with their new cage, which is right here. This is the new setup for them. I'm obviously going to add all their bamboo into here and some other bamboo that I have lying around. Because I did end up selling the um, Felsuma Laticata or the Gold Dust Day Geckos in order to upgrade these guys and put them in a much larger cage. And just because these guys are Day Geckos that I really, really wanted, the Laticata are really cool species, and I have nothing against them. It's just not something that I'm going to want to keep long term. So this is their new tank. Um, I just need to throw on a little miniature heat bulb, and I will throw on some UV as well. And then that'll be their new digs. Now over here, I will just update you guys real quick on some of the plants. You guys can see, got some orchids blooming. Oh, look at that. This guy right up front here is about to bloom. That's cool. I've never actually had one bloom before. And uh, those will be, most of these will be used in a build coming up soon. So stay tuned. Now, for the monster that we call Bane, check him out. He is beautiful. So Bane is a Lichionis. Gecko, or a Rachidactylus Lichionis, or a Giant Gecko, or whatever all the common names are for Rachidactylus Lichionis. Uh, he is a Nuana cross Nuami locale, and he is a very, very unhappy boy. Pretty much hates everything, especially technology and stuff. I'll give him a miss down right now, but I, I love him. He is my boy, and I respect him. I don't stress him out by holding him or anything like that. Uh, I just recognize his nature, and if that's what he wants, then that's what he gets. Uh, I'm not going to be one to super stress him out every time I want to interact with him, but very, very special creatures. If you guys get them as babies, you can tame them down pretty nicely most of the time, and they make for extremely wicked pets. Um, I, I I really honestly think that everybody should have a Lichianus Gecko. They are quite expensive, but if more people have them, more people breed them, the less they cost. So, can't deny that fact. And, um, yeah, that's, that's Bane. The Lichionis Gecko. My little pill vial with my Brachypelma Bomi, or Bomai, I, however you want to pronounce it. I haven't seen him in like two, three weeks probably. He basically dug to the very bottom of his pill jar and stayed there. There's no openings or anything, so I haven't fed him. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know if he's still alive. He's just a tiny, tiny little sling. So, I mean... If he wanted food and wanted to eat, he'd likely come to the surface. At least that's my logic. I will definitely be getting more tarantulas, a couple more. Not like crazy hundreds of tarantulas, but one or two more just so I can always have one eating and hanging out and looking badass. So 
that's that. Up here, we just have a tank that I built. There's really nothing special to it. It's nothing inside. It's just uh, plants. Uh, I think there's a couple isopods, springtails, that kind of thing. Nothing really special about it. Just a really cool 8x8x12 exoterra setup. Um, so these are my Dendrobates citronella. Very cool little dudes. Well, big dudes, I guess. They're they're not really very little, <laughs> but they are really cool. I really, really like these guys. Uh, like I said, it's kind of the same with a uh, the Lichianus gecko. I really think that everybody should have dart frogs, especially if you're into reptiles and stuff. Um, just building their habitats and plant selection and stuff like that is something that I really enjoy, and I know a lot of my friends who are in the reptile hobby really enjoy, so dart frogs are really the, the pinnacle when it comes to being able to pick some really cool plants out, make really beautiful display vivariums for them. They're just overall super, super cool creatures, but especially the Tinctorius are very interactive, and I mean, you can see these two clowns just sitting up front waiting for food or something. I fed them today, so I, <laughs> I don't know what they're waiting for. They're just wanting out, I suppose. I I don't know. I don't speak frogs, so <laughs> I can't talk to them. But these guys will be getting upgraded to uh, the same size tank as that, which is like 34 by 20 by 26 or something. I, I don't know. It's a really weird, very weird number. Um, Sheldon. I guess we could update them on you. Hey, what do you say? Get over here. Get over here. He's obsessed with trying to push off my laptop. It's really annoying. Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> uh, well, you guys saw Sheldon. He's doing fine, eating well. He's not really growing very much anymore, which is kind of nice, to be honest. Uh, and then his tank is very similar. He's got a basking spot here that is a solar glow so there is UV coming from there there's UV hanging from up top there that bulb will need to be replaced in probably two months now and then there's just a LED floodlight over there for ambient light that's Sheldon uh, nothing really else to say about that and now for the other dart frog tank holy man this tank is nuts so I really don't like the tank very much, to be totally honest. It's just not my favorite tank that I've ever made. Right back there is little baby Ufaga Pumilio Almarentes. These guys are breeding like mad. I love it. It's great. Um, <laughs> if you guys are interested in some babies, they won't be for sale right away, but I do have two sub-adults that are ready to be sold. So if you're in the Calgary area, um, I will be driving up to Edmonton in the next week or two, so if you're up, even up there, I can also drop them off to you. But, uh, these guys are breeding like mad. If you haven't seen my Instagram, make sure you go check it out. I have some pictures of these guys, as well as some pictures of the frog eggs that they lay. And, uh, it's a really cool species of frog. Uh, what's nice about the froglets is that these guys are the Ufaga genus, which basically means f egg eating, and um, that's exactly what the tadpoles do. The parents will lay eggs in the tadpole chambers, and the tadpoles will chomp down on those eggs, grow, and morph out into a frog with me having to do nothing. So that is beautiful. There's another baby up top there. Look at you. So cool. I love these guys. So this is Dixon, the Europlatus gumthri. There's no females of these guys in Canada, so that kind of stinks. Um, and considering my potential future plans, I'm not gonna order any from the States or import any, uh, unless somebody is like, hey, I breed them in Europe. Because I know some people that do imports from Europe, and if you guys have confirmed females, let me know, I'll take them. But, uh, He's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lizard. I, I mean, I can't really say too much about him because he's, uh, he's not out right now. Well, not super visible, but I, I post pictures of him regularly on my Instagram because he is so photogenic. 
The nice thing about the Gunthry is that they are tolerant to much warmer temperatures than a lot of the other Europlatus genus, which is nice because my room in the summer does hit about 85, and that means it's probably like 88 or so in the tanks, depending on the temperature and uh, various different factors, but it can get relatively warm, and these guys tolerate it very well. Obviously, I feed a little bit more just because of the warmer temperatures, but um, it seems to combat it nicely. Ooh, Tig's fired up, look at that. Hoo hoo, looking good, Tigo. So we all know and love the Crested Gecko Tig. You can see her down there, I don't think I need to point her out, but. Look at you, oh, half of you is fired up, that's cool. That's actually so cool. So I ended up breaking her branch when I stopped to take some pictures. But uh, you can see her. She's doing very well. She's eating nicely. She's growing. Well, she's not growing really anymore. But she's maintaining a good, maybe slightly overweight. <laughs> and uh, looking very good. I, I, I can't complain too much about her. Her tank is very easy. Um, super basic plants. I get so many questions of what plants to throw in a Cresta Gecko Viv. Uh, basically, let me just give you the breakdown of what I have in her tank right now. I have Snake Plant, or it's called Mother's Tongue, or Sansevera, which is those tall green and white ones. I have an African Mask Plant, which is this alocasia right here. And in the very back there, it's kind of hard to see and it's not growing very well. But I also have a Ficus Elastica right back there. So because she's not going to be breaking branches all the time and whatnot, the Ficus is suitable. But uh, if, if you have a very large gecko or it's rambunctious and tends to break leaves, then a Ficus might not be the best for you. But yeah, that's, that's her setup. It's very basic, very easy. And really nice. I really actually quite enjoy her entire setup as a whole. So that's going to wrap up the video there, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed me showing you pretty much everything in my room right now. I really am curious what you guys think I'm going to get for the tank back here. I cannot wait to see all the comments uh, for the names for the new turtles, the probably most charismatic turtle out there. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'm not looking for things like Bonnie and Clyde and stuff like that. Please. Just... I like, like, cultural rich names where it actually means something rather than just like, oh, Bonnie and Clyde, <laughs> good one, or Bruce, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I don't know. That's just not me. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like button. Wait, what? I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, make sure you leave it in the comment section down below. While you're down there, leave the name suggestions and what you think is going in the tank behind me, as well as any videos that you guys want to see. I have some ideas. Um, I'm on my last semester of university. Hopefully the coursework is not going to be extremely high, but uh, I've also picked up more shifts at work, so I'll try and pump out as much content as I absolutely can. And if you guys want to see that content, as well as other reptile-related videos in my room here or at my friend Cody's house, something like that. Teaser for that video. <laughs> Make sure you click that subscribe button and play Ding Dong Ditch with the doorbell next to it. That way you get notified every time I post a video on this channel. I also want to ask you, for those of you that stayed to the end of this video, if you think that I should start doing live streams again. Just once a week, whether they're a Q&A or I have a topic to talk about, something like that, it would probably be Wednesdays is when I'd like to do it. So let me know if you're interested in that kind of thing and you join me for live streams. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this long reptile room tour and we'll catch you in the next one. Later.